Hi, so I'll be presenting a case of EUS guided coiling and glue injection for management of gastric fundal varices. This is a 25 year old male with decompensated cirrhosis presented with upper GI bleeding in the form of melana times two. Vitals were stable with blood pressure of 110 over 70, tachycardia in hundreds, afebrile. Hemoglobin was down to 9.6. An upper GI endoscopy showed a large gastric fundal varices with extravasation of blood in the gastric lumen. We switched to the endosonography where large anoechoic structures are seen. These are the gastric fundal varices. A 19 gauge Cook Ecotip needle is advanced inside the fundal varix, followed by deployment of a coil. We use the MRI coils 12 millimeter by Cook. Following this, we advance the needle again inside the fundal varix followed by deployment of another coil. The coils create a thrombus inside the fundal varix and on Doppler you see there's a slight reduction in the flow. We supplemented this with endoscopically guided glue injection and uh, there's some extravasation of glue there. But following this endosonography showed almost complete reduction or absence of blood flow in the gastric fundal varix. Post-procedure patient did not have any adverse events. The patient was discharged in two days. The follow-up of a GI endoscopy is currently awaited. For management of gastric varices, endosonography offers several advantages. You don't need to actually visualize the varix, which can be a problem if there's a lot of blood in the gastric lumen. You can actually visualize the needle inside the varices. You can also sometimes identify the perforating vein and that can be selectively embolized. Follow-up endosonography can show if the varices are obliterated as in this case, as you saw, there was a, a thrombus formation with significant reduction in blood flow. The disadvantage is limited availability of endosonography and expertise for the same. Comparing glue versus coil, overall in the series, the obliteration rate with glue was 94.7% versus with coils was 90.9%, but coils offer a distinct advantage with lower complication rates than glue. And in fact, that's why you combine glue and coil, uh, which was shown in this large series of 152 patients with 99% success rate, 93% obliteration, and 1% risk of embolization. So what really happens is the coil acts as a scaffolding for the glue to attach itself and therefore embolization of glue is prevented and the amount required for glue is also much lower when you combine it with coiling, right? Thank you so much.